he says, when a man is saved unto Christ, isn't he then made alive in Christ? In light of Romans 6, how can a saved person still be in sin? Right, so we mentioned Romans 6, so let's go there. Romans 6. What does Romans 6 actually say? <clears throat> so I imagine, you know, the question is simply the, the last part. How can a saved person still be in sin? I don't know what in sin means in this the questionnaire's mind, but I, I would I would understand. How do you understand? Do you understand how can a saved person basically sin sometimes or uh, it depends where he needs to have it in sin. Yeah, it doesn't need in slavery to sin. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so Romans 6 talks about that. So if if the questioner means can a saved person still be a slave to sin? Uh, if the questioner meant can a saved person fall into sin, then the answer would be different. It would be, yes, of course, he still can fall into sin. It doesn't mean that he's uh, reached sinless perfection. But let's actually go to Romans 6 and uh, just real quick look at it and see what Paul says there. I mean, you know, I uh, I was uh, I was looking for Anthony's, you know, Ant Brother Anthony who was here, Pagliata, did I get his name right? Yeah, he preached a, ser a sermon on Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8, or, well, on almost 8, uh, that I thought was a very good overview of those chapters, especially 6 and 7. So I actually looked for it, but I don't think it's uh, online, is it? I have to, I just found it on, I just found the live stream, so I'm not sure what happened there, but um, uh, it was a, it was a good sermon. And, um, yeah, so we, with Romans 6, uh, anywhere, Romans 6 or 7 or that kind of thing, you, you really want the whole context of 5, 6, 7, and 8, because if you just jump into one verse, you can, you can get the wrong idea. But anyway, so I think if we look at chapter 6, it will be sufficient. And so let's, let's start at the beginning. What shall we say then? Shall we continue and say, obviously, that, that's in the middle of an argument. What shall we say then? Well, to what? To what he said earlier. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not, says Paul. How shall we who died to sin? Now notice that. I want you to count every time he speaks positionally, positional truth here in this chapter. And every time he speaks about practical truth, you know, something that you have to do now. Uh, right. Something that is true of you if you are in Christ, and something that must be true now of you, so that you you actually have to do it, uh, because that's that that's key. So, so he says, "How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it?" So the Christian, you can you can put it on paper. The Christian has died to sin, or he says, verse three, "Do you not know?" That as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. So that's why we uh, baptize people who are, well, who profess faith, but especially we want uh, to make sure those people were actually genuinely saved. And so if a person then says, I wasn't genuinely saved when I was baptized, well, then it it uh, it follows that we would baptize them, not again, but the, for, you know, this time for real, because the baptism is supposed to symbolize death that has happened. You know, so if you're in Christ, you've died, the old man has died, you died, and now you're burying the old man and you're raising the new man to the new man to life, so that uh, the rest of, of life is lived, you know, in that you know resurrection life. Uh, and so, so that's the the example here that is given with baptism. But again, the background is you you died to sin, you died with Christ. Uh, verse five: For if we have been united together in the likeness of His death, certainly we will also we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. Uh, knowing this, that our old man, and now here is one of three places in Scripture in New Testament where he uses that term, old man, new man, that kind of thing, uh, that our old man, our old nature, was crucified with him, 
So he, again, positional. That part of the verse is positional. Our old man was crucified with him. Past tense. That the body of sin might be done away with. Now, look at this. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. Now, here he talks uh, about what ought to be. You know, that we ought not to be slaves of sin. Now, next verse. Again, positional. For he who has died has been freed from sin. So what, what do we say about Christians? They have been freed from sin. Okay, next verse. Now, if we died with Christ, again, positional, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death has no longer dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But, uh, but uh, the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also, and now that is, very important here, this verse, because that's not positional, that's practical. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So you see how he says, well, you died to sin, but now you ought to reckon yourself dead to sin. Now, how does that work? You know, how does how how is it that you're both dead to sin and now you have to reckon yourself? What what happens if I don't reckon myself dead to sin? <laughs> What's reckon? Reckon is well. Consider, right? Count yourselves. So, so and then continue reading. Therefore, do not, and that, now he explains, how do you reckon yourself dead to sin? Do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its, uh, you obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So he says, yes, you died to sin, but at the same time, you have now an obligation, a Christian duty, now to consider yourselves in light of that, you know, death to sin, and actually master your body and everything, any every part of it, so that you present every part of your body, every part of your mind, every part of your being, as dead to sin and alive to God. Now use everything that you have for for God's glory, and not for sin's glory anymore. For not for not to obey sin anymore. So, uh, and that, by the way, was impossible before you were dead in sin. Uh, dead to sin. Sorry, whilst you were dead in sin, before you were dead to sin, that was impossible. You were enslaved to sin, right? So that I think he he uh, he goes into that. As well, so that's verse fourteen now. Very important verse, and very that that's that's a very potent verse. If you actually believe what it says, and if you actually uh, understand it, and if you know if it's true of you, especially for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. What does that mean? That implies that once upon a time, you were under sin's dominion. You did nothing but sin. <laughs> we, we, you know, uh, even your good works were whatever you did for God. You, whatever you thought what was was righteous and great was stained with sin. It came from a heart which is sinful. And now that that has changed, sin has no longer any dominion over you. Does that mean that you're incapable of sinning? No. <laughs> uh, you are still capable of sinning. It means that it just doesn't have dominion. It's not your master anymore. And then he goes on. What then? Shall we sin because we're not no longer under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey? whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. So here's a test for you. Do you present yourselves as slaves to sin or do you present yourselves as slaves of righteousness? Because if sin is the pattern of your life, just like consistently, then no matter how much professions you have made, it that shows you that actually you are a slave of sin. You haven't died to sin. Now, we're not talking again about sinless perfection, but we're talking here about a pattern of life. You're presenting yourself over and over and over again 
uh, just as a consistent thing and that he says again positionally but God be thanked you know so he says that if that's the case then but God be thanked says Paul that though you were slaves of sin again were past tense once upon a time yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered uh, and uh, having been set free from sin slaves of righteousness now again positional truth uh something happened you were slaves once upon a time and now you are uh not slaves anymore uh <laughs> now you're uh, well you're it's not just that you're not slaves to sin anymore you're slaves of righteousness now so it's like it's like you can't help it <laughs> you want to live righteously now um i speak as a human uh, sorry i speak in human terms because of your of the weakness of your flesh for just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness or holiness. And again, that's not positional. That's actually telling him in practice what you need to do. Okay? That's that's up to you. You have the, uh, well, you're responsible for that. You used to present your members in a certain way for sin. Now, you have the responsibility to present your members for righteousness sake uh, so um so here we have it you know that's a practical uh a verse for when you were slaves of sin again were past it you were free in regard to righteousness and now he'll speak about fruit look what fruit did you have then in these things of which you are now ashamed for the end of those things is death but now having been set free from sin you have become slaves of god you have your fruit to holiness and the uh, and the end, everlasting life. So here he's talking about fruit. What fruit does your life produce? Does it produce the kind of fruit which leads to death? Or does it produce that kind of fruit which leads to life? Now, on a fruit tree, not every single apple or apple tree is perfectly good. Even if it's a good fruit tree, right? A good apple tree. Now, every now and then, there's one that's a bit off. But in general, most of them... Are good if it's a good tree if it's a bad tree all of them are bad apart from maybe one or two uh, but uh you, you get the point that's how you know a tree is known by its fruit and so he he gets into that and he says well basically uh, look at the fruit of your life what does the fruit look like and then the famous verse for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of god is eternal life in christ jesus our lord so uh, that's romans 6 and you can see how uh, there's there's verses which speak positionally what happened with you if you are in Christ and there's verses which speak practically what what ought to be the case now now they don't say uh, what is the case with you because you are responsible for that now that they say what ought to be the case and whether and if that's not true then maybe you should question whether positionally you are actually you you were ever converted whether you were saved whether you are in Christ. Uh, so yeah, it's like, I'm thinking of it as a, a caterpillar, uh, that's gone through a metamorphosis. You, it, is that what they go through? <laughs> a caterpillar, then a cocoon, it curls up into a cocoon, and then after some time, it's a butterfly. Now, caterpillars, they can't fly, but butterflies, they can. Caterpillars, they crawl. Butterflies usually don't. I mean, they, they, they just fly and, uh, now occasionally you might see a cat, uh, sorry, a, a butterfly, uh, I don't know, just not flying, but I don't know, can they walk somewhere? I don't know. Maybe they can't. Uh, so, so it's like, imagine a butterfly that's just came out of the cocoon. Immediately they know how to fly. But if that butterfly doesn't reckon itself as a butterfly, doesn't count itself as a butterfly and it thinks it's still a caterpillar that doesn't happen in nature i don't think but imagine and it tries to crawl again like it did before it will be it will look silly and and uh it can it do it maybe it can but but the point is that that's not its nature anymore now its nature is to fly it can fly and uh and it should fly and so what paul is saying once you were a caterpillar the only you could do is crawl you couldn't fly now 
if you're in Christ, you've been buried in the cocoon and you came out of the cocoon in baptism. Now you can fly. Now you can live to God. Now your life is is Godward. It, it's pleasing to God. And now you can be, now you're slaves to righteousness. <laughs> so now you can fly. So don't try to crawl anymore. You know, so stop crawling. Fly. And uh, that's that's how I see it. That's how I see those verses. So yes, uh, if you are a Christian, I mean, of course you can fall into sin. Of course, you know, that there's a... Uh, um, there's the that, that yeah, by the way that's when the battle with sin begins before you were uh when you were a slave to sin who's which slave master fights with his slaves no no slave master i mean the battle begins once you are set free from the slave master now you start fighting him and so uh so that's when the battle begins uh, but uh don't confuse the, the yeah uh well on one on one hand don't confuse the battle with being unconverted he's thinking oh no i fell into sin therefore i must be i uh, you know not saved because i'm i should be perfect now uh don't confuse that's not true equally if you are just continuing to roll in the mud of sin and you love it and you are just thinking oh i shouldn't do that because that's what the bible says but i love it and i and that's what i really uh want to do if only there was not the bible i would you know, be happy, the happiest person that might give evidence that you were never, that you never died to sin, that you never died to sin. You just love to crawl <laughs> and you don't, uh, and, uh, no matter how many times someone tells you, come on, fly, fly, fly. The caterpillar just, just can't do it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we have a similar practical versus positional, um, uh, verses in uh, in Colossians. I mean, we have them in many places, but uh, Colossians is uh, very uh, clear on that. And so I'll, I'll just read a few verses here in Colossians. Colossians 3. Uh, just the first few 11 verses, maybe. It says, if you were, you know, again, if you were raised with Christ, it, it's a very similar kind of uh, topic here that Paul uh, engages in. If you were raised with Christ, so that's past tense. That seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. So now, if that that's true of you, then let that be true of you. So you're not responsible for being raised with Christ. You're responsible for seeking now those things which are above, if that's true of you. Set your minds, uh, verse 2, on things above. Again, that's that ought to be true of you. Uh, you, you. That's what you need to do. Set your minds on things above, not on the things of the earth. For... You died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ with your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death. Wait a minute. Did he not just say you died? Yes, he did. You died. But therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked. You once, that, that was true of you once. And you didn't just stumble and fall once or twice. You walked in those things. That was your daily conversation. That was your daily walk. That was that characterized your life. When you lived in them. It doesn't speak about uh, you know, where where you know actual where your house was it speaks about how you used to live but now you yourselves are to put off all these anger wrath malice blasphemy filthy language out of your mouth now here's something you ought to do so don't think of it as an automatic thing yes if you are in christ there's things that happened to you that you were not in control of but at the same time now you are given the responsibility to put to death a certain uh characteristics of of your life to actually uh, s uh subdue your body and its uh its passions and in those things in the mind which are not uh in line with christ and his word and so on so so the both both of them go hand in hand and uh and then he goes on to say uh verse 9 do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds you have done that and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him 
where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all in all. You want to you want to think biblically about all those things, of course. And in, in First uh, John two one says, "My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if you, if anyone sins, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So, if it taught, if the Bible taught sin is perfection, that verse would not be there, or it wouldn't be that way. It wouldn't write it that way." Equally, it doesn't say that a, a practicing Christian or a, practicing Christian, a, a, a Christian who practices sin is a Christian because it says if you fall into sin, if anyone sins, <laughs> not when you sin, uh, you know, just you do it without without thinking. Uh, but if you do, uh, so it, it shows that there is some, like the Proverbs say, the the righteous uh, falls seven times and gets back up again, right? So it's, there. there is a, a, well, even Anthony said it in his sermon, a few steps forward, a few steps back, a few steps forward, a few steps back, but the overall course of life is upward, unlike the person who's, who's dead in sin. 